Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com, and I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about the Keras Customs Titanium Nibs. Um, they announced a while ago, you know, probably early 2016 or so, that they were going to be coming out with these. Um, these are nibs that are made by Bach in Germany. So I've actually seen these titanium nibs available on a couple other pen models, um, but this is really the first time that we've had them available uh, as a separate nib unit. So we've been getting a lot of questions, and I wanted to try to answer some of them for you. Um, these nibs are uh, coming in a housing with a feed, and they're made to fit into the Keras Customs Ink fountain pen. But because it's number six size, you can actually remove it and you can fit it into other pens. So I think there's a lot of interest in these nibs beyond just the Keras Customs model. But you will be able to get them on the ink in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad size. So one of the questions I get is titanium is a new material. Most people are used to stainless steel and gold, but where does titanium kind of fall in the mix compared to those two? A lot of people are referring to it as flex nibs. It's really not a flex nib, but it definitely has a, an extreme softness is what I would call it. Um, you can get some pretty good line variation with it, but there's some special considerations to make. Before I get in, all into that, it's really gonna be a lot softer than stainless steel. Even the stainless steel flex nibs you have, like the Noodler's nibs, it's gonna be even softer than that. It's gonna be a lot more comparable to a gold nib, but it's a little bit toothier, so it's not quite as smooth as most gold nibs are going to be. So it's gonna be kind of in between those. Um, and given the price point, I think it's a nice balance between those because it's probably about halfway between a gold and steel nib. So you're gonna get a lot of that soft feel with a little bit more of the toothiness that you might expect with some stainless steel nibs. All right, so how do these things actually write? Because I think unless you've used one before, you don't really know. And the thing that I can say the most about these nibs is they are incredibly wet. I mean, really wet. Even though it goes down to an extra fine, it's gonna write more like a fine or probably a medium of most other nibs. And then when you get up to that medium and broad, like you better hang on because this thing is gonna be gushing like a fire hose, especially that broad. And because of the softness of this, if you're writing with any amount of pressure, not even trying to flex it out, but just writing with any increased pressure, it's gonna write even and wetter. So just be ready for that and plan your paper needs accordingly because if you have really absorbent paper, it's going to feather, it's going to bleed and all that kind of stuff. So just definitely know that that's what's happening with these nibs. And then when it comes to their softness too, that's something that's gonna be very different, especially if you're coming from stainless steel nibs. If you don't have a lot of experience with some of the softer gold nibs or with flex you know, stainless steel nibs, I think it might be a surprise how soft these nibs can actually feel. So that's something you're gonna to have to kind of get used to a little bit. Um, if you're, you know, find the softness of it appealing and you're really wanting to flex it and get some line variation, I would just throw out a word of caution so it's easy to spread the tines with these and it's gonna give you uh, a different feeling of resistance than if you're using any other type of flex nib or really soft gold nib. It's not gonna give you the same feeling before you're about to spring the tines. So if you're trying to really push the limits on this, it's really easy to go too far with it, especially if you have any experience. I don't know how much of you We'll probably have this, but like the Omos flexible nibs, uh, if you remember those, they don't, they're not really around much anymore, but it was the same kind of thing where it had almost a little bit of a, I'll call it a mushy feeling when you're, when you're spreading those tines out. And then it's easy to go just a little bit too far and then the tines are sprung and then it's gonna write dry and cause you some problems. So you just have to really be careful if you're intentionally trying to do it because it's easy to go too far. Now the thing about this is that the nibs are not glassy smooth. They've got a pretty decent amount of feedback to them, which I actually kind of like. Because the nib is so soft, having a little more feedback, um, it kind of grounds you. It grabs onto the paper a little bit and gives you kind of a, a place to kind of plant yourself as you're writing. So I find it to be a nice touch. So because you can use these on other pens, they're number six sizes, and you know, of course they're Keras Customs that's selling these, so you know they're gonna kind of warranty their pens on it, but if you're gonna be putting it onto any other brand of pen, just understand that when you're swapping parts out on pens, you're voiding the warranty for the way that that pen writes. So having said that, you know, being a number six nib, it's, you can fit it on a number of other pens. You can fit it on you know, a Noodler's Ahab or a Conrad. You can fit it on the Twisby VAC 700 or 700R. You can fit it on the Jinhao X450, 750, 159, a bunch of other Jinhaos. 
the tactile turn gist, a bunch of different Monteverde and Conklins, Edisons, and there's a whole bunch of other brands you can fit it on here that are kind of too numerous for me to mention right now. Swapping them takes a little bit of knowledge about the parts and how the pens work, so definitely not for everybody. You gotta make sure that you're comfortable doing it and uh, you know, you're taking your risk in your own hands when you do it, but if you gently remove the nib from the housing itself, you know, avoid pinching the wings or twisting the tines, um, you just insert it in place of the other nib, make sure that the tines are aligned and you're good to go. So hopefully that covers some of it for you. If you like this nib and you want to learn more about it, you can check it out on GouletPens.com. You can see it there in an extra fine through broad. We have it available as its own nib unit for $60, but if you're already getting a Keras Customs Ink and you want to get it as an upgrade, it's only $40. So if you have any questions about it, be sure to ask on YouTube or on our blog and check out more on our site. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and right on.